Before I start this video, I want to say I don't have any connection personally to Steve Barrow, but throughout my time of being on YouTube, there has been a series of videos that cycle about him saying he did this, he did that, and as of very recent, as you guys are probably familiar with, this guy named The Hyphenate put out like a three-part series on Steve Barrow and how he got screwed over, and I want to get into that and do a little deep dive on that, but first, I want to talk about why he's like universally hated because it seems like whenever I were to bring his name up in any video, people would always be like, oh, he did this, he did that. So let's quickly find out the start of why he was hated. Watch this video, get some information, and then kind of dive into it a little bit more. This says, why do skaters hate Steve Barra? Well, here's the meat of it. It started to really fall apart around 2016. And that was when Steve Barra decided to go live on his Barracks Instagram page account and just go on a massive rant about everything that's been on his mind since that fake skate spots thing happened. His giant rants or meltdown or whatever you want to call it lasted about 30 minutes and it ranged from topics of him saying that nobody is core except for me to him talking shit about DC being too- Nobody is core except for me. That sounds like the most narcissistic thing anyone can possibly say. Yeah, that, that'll take a huge L on your career. Stream ...and criticizing some of the business moves that they made recently. Now, while the rant may have been a highlight, Steve Bear was doing something in the background that would not only hurt his reputation, but also hurt the brand image of the barracks. To make a long story short, the barracks was originally the skate park, right? Then eventually, when social media came around, he made an Instagram page for it. Great. At first, the Instagram page just had very core skaters on it, very good tricks, stuff that would blow your mind, you know? Then, all of a sudden, around 2015, 2016, the barracks started posting a lot of just garbage on their Instagram page. They started posting like girls doing mob kickflips and they're just there because they're hot and they get millions of views just because they're hot. Their tricks aren't even that good. And then he also had those people come and skate at the barracks, which should have been like a mecca of skateboarding. It should have been like a very holy skate park that- Now this is an interesting thing here. A lot of people I know and a lot of people across the board will get upset when someone who's already popular for doing one thing starts deviating and doing a whole other thing. You know, rightfully so, because that's what they're originally given is what they want to see more of and not see something totally different. So I do get it. But, you know, when something becomes a big brand, a big business, sometimes you do have to branch out. Now, that's not me, like, making any defensive move here or anything. I just wanted to quickly talk about that. Let's continue. Nobody could really get into unless you were elite. And that's just not the case anymore. Almost anybody can get in. And when skaters obviously got upset because this is not worth a barracks post, Steve would get into massive comment arguments by responding with his literal like barracks account. And he would either like delete comments or he would disable them. And he would, he would just clash the community of skateboarding. While then- Okay, right there. If you're someone who's like a leader of a community and you're going back and like kind of fighting people in the comments, you're gonna ruin your brand. That's just a given. Like people are going to remember that. Even if it's just like two or three comments, down the line, people are bound to remember that. So that's why people are upset. Let's continue hearing this guy for a little bit and then we'll dive into the hyphenate stuff. Every time he was portraying this holier than thou demeanor in response to criticism. This caused a lot of people to stop calling Steve Barra Steve Barra and start calling him Simp Barra because he would defend all of these mediocre skater girls by saying that they're just as good as the guys when it's just not. They don't deserve to be on the barracks if they aren't good. And the girls that actually are good seem to get posted less than the girls that are mediocre at best. More recently with the barracks, a lot of people are hating on it because of the redesign that they made by pretty much having tons of advertisers posted all over their walls and even on the floor like they have like minion stuff like i'll say this i personally got a little bit upset when i started to see all these brands all over barracks it just became this like flashy thing rather than like skating it was like barracks and this brand this brand this this brand that i've talked about this in a podcast before and i thought that was kind of annoying but i kind of in the background let it slide as like all right you got to make the money somehow like just posting clips of skaters isn't how you make your income as you know as a brand so I kind of let that slide.
But there's been some brands that people aren't too fond of that they've done collaborations with, which is why people are getting upset over it. And it's super random too, but let's continue. Why do you have minion stuff in skateboarding? Like, I, I thought minions were limited to like Facebook moms, but I, I guess they're now into skateboarding too. Great. But what people were most upset about was the giant Karayuma poster that was just plastered on like the main wall at the barracks. Now, Karayuma has without a doubt been the most hated brand to enter skateboarding since the beginning of Adidas and Nike trying to get their way into skateboarding. Part of that is skaters hating on new things, but a bigger part of that is that their logo is plastered literally everywhere that Barrett has touched. And on top of that, they seem to have a massive marketing. Yeah, the marketing plan went bonkers with Karayuma. Like, even people that I know personally started promoting Karayuma, even on a small scale, people on a larger scale. Even you look at right here, John Hill Skate, he was like Karayuma, like he probably got paid to make that video. Like they were making every possible move to be like Karayuma this, Karayuma that, flash the logo at the beginning of the Battle of the Barracks, etc. It was freaking everywhere. When stuff gets everywhere, people get annoyed by it, but that also kind of works for a brand because people remember it and the brand gets stuck. I haven't stopped thinking about it, so it clearly worked on me as much as I don't want to admit that. But let's continue to hear this out a little bit. ...budget towards YouTubers, so it's just plastered all over YouTube as well. What it really comes down to is that Karayuma is marketing towards kids and not skaters. Linking back to just people hating on Barra, he would always preach about supporting local skate shops and small skate companies and to keep skateboarding core, guys. Let's keep skateboarding core. Yeah, that was a huge argument he made back then is like, got to support the core group of skaters, the locals. So... That is also another reason why the Karyuma thing upset people. So he just kind of was taking like L after L. Now, was this happening day after day? No, it happened over a period of time. And people started to see less like personality from him and more of like this branding thing take over and stuff that he originally said wasn't holding its word anymore. And so that kind of was where the start of the hate of Steve Barra comes in. Now, let's fast forward before I hop into the hype and it stuff. There was this video a while back that Gifted Hater put up where it was just like a very like well thought out response from Steve Barra, which you guys probably already saw this video, but right here it was like this whole comment. It was it was basically a weird situation where Steve Barra went on like another account and left this whole message that was like off of the barracks. This was a very odd thing that kind of showed that he's into the whole drama thing. This is once again how, kind of how he responded to people in the comments before. Now he's back responding again. He kind of just loves like feeding into the drama, which led to him being hated on even more than he already was. Kind of using that as a backbone to what I'm about to get into here. Uh, you can see that he's really invested in drama. Now, drama sells. We're all invested in drama. Whether you want to believe it or not, we all enjoy it. So let's dive into drama. <laughs> the hyphen that made this video called how the barracks screwed me over right here and to quickly recap it basically barra and the hyphenate kind of created this online friendship and they messaged each other he sent him a package and then they kind of went back and forth uh and then came covid he went and helped like paint the barracks and then there was like hey how else can i help out and they kind of like figured out a deal of how he can help out and agree to it but nothing was ever like written in a contract it was just kind of verbal agreements email agreements they went back and forth. Every time they went back and forth, uh, there was always like something that wasn't happening. And they say, okay, let's do this. And then they'd go back and then try to do the thing again. And then it wouldn't go through or like he'd put in the work. He made investments on his own dime and then he never got, you know, the return for it. And then they had to go back and forth again. So it was just all these back and forth things that led to the hyphenate losing a bunch of money and Steve Barrow's word not coming to fruition for him after he was being told a million times that these things were going to happen. And so to fast forward, there's this video he put up called Steve Barra's Nonviolent Ambush and Payoff Attempt. Let's dive into this real quickly. And I had no plans on making another Barra video, but on Friday, January 13th, two days ago, Barra showed up out of nowhere because a friend told him where I was going to be at and at what time. Throughout that situation, he ended up trying to buy me off. First off, one thing I want to mention before I continue this video, obviously I wasn't here to like live this experience he did, but that first video he put up was very like 
detail after detail, moment after moment, moment after moment, and it was like over an hour long. This video is like 20 minutes long, and he kind of goes through like these little conversations that they had, like almost word for word. I know he kind of summarizes them, but dude, if he was making this as a video that he wanted to lie about, this is like the world's most extensive lie possible. So I don't think he's lying about it in this video, and he seems like a very genuine guy. Uh, he, you know, he sticks to his word and he's got a lot of stuff going on his channel that he talks about in this video. He also says, if you want evidence, you can like, he'll, t you know, he'll give you the evidence if you need to see it, etc. things like that. Now, does drama sell? Like I said before, yeah, drama sells. So can you embellish some stories? Yeah, you can. But you know, I, I like to think that this guy's not, you know, adding too much onto it. He's kind of Cutting it to us as is. It's kind of how his personality reflects. But again, I'm very like quick to believe things oftentimes. So I don't want to like take a road here. I'm just kind of responding to what I'm hearing. So that I could take down the previous video. I'm going to get into that entire situation. Everything that was said from both of us and how that all unfolded. But before I do, I just want to say... Thank you to everybody who's been so supportive this whole time. Again, wanted to clarify that I put that video out really just to clear my name and have something to show to the people who have heard negative things about me. So anytime that someone would ask about things that were being said about me that were false, that were lies, I had something to show them that has a document of the entire process. And again, use that video as a warning to Barra to stop talking about me that was the purpose of that video so let's take it from the beginning me and a friend had plans to go get lunch i had zero intention of even having any discussion about this barra barrack situation with them it was just to go have lunch catch up i'm having a conversation and then i hear the chair next to me move and when i turn around barra sits down right next to me instinctually i just turn i get very firm because i don't know what's about to happen like now i'm like in I see him and I'm in ready mode for whatever's about to happen. And he sees me very serious, instantly goes very calm. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? And I'm kind of in shock in my mind. He's in shock because the last place that they left off at was him basically getting yelled at. And then he just didn't respond to his last text because he knew he was just going to get yelled at again. And so for him to come at the hyphen, it very like calm. It's very strange. How do you go from one high to this like calm thing like overnight like that? I mean, obviously not overnight, but it's like there's something to be said there, right? About when you're like freaking out on someone, then you hit this like, hey, man, what's up sort of vibe. Like something is off there, right? I'm like kind of like what the f is happening right now? Again, I didn't expect this to happen at all, obviously. Externally, I'm very suck. Hey, man, so... I came over here to try to see how we can fix things. Again, Barra's demeanor is like super calm. So then I'm kind of like now just hearing him out. Yeah, man, you put out this video and, you know, you're saying a bunch of stuff. I'm here to see how we can make things right. <laughs> Dude, okay. Why is his impression like spot on? It's so goddamn funny, dude. What do you mean? Well, you put out this video and you're attacking us and then i explain i put out this video stating facts about what went down while you're attacking the barracks and saying a bunch of things about us are you saying that anything on my video is not accurate anything in my video is a lie well i don't understand because we gave you a platform and you released some videos with us like just trying to go very vague and i instantly start seeing that he's not even addressing the points that i talked about in the video so i say did you watch the video well, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw clips and... <laughs> now that's funny that he said he didn't watch the whole thing because that seemed to be a reoccurring theme in the video one where he would make a video and then Barrow wouldn't even watch the videos that he was like trying to get released or see what the content was. So that's just like the funny reoccurring theme of him not watching the videos. It's like, dude, it's not that hard. I mean... It's just really interesting to me, too, because it's like, here we are in 2023. They just put up that post on Instagram the other day. It said, Eric Costin and Steve Bear are now 100% back in control of the barracks. 
So wouldn't you think that, like, if you're 100% in control, you'd be the one to, like, watch the videos and, like, take on the responsibilities? You'd think. Let's continue. And people are telling me things, I stop them. Watch the video and then come talk to me. There's no reason for us to have this conversation if you haven't actually watched the video. Go watch the video, look at every single point, and then come back and talk to me, and we can address every single point I made in that video. And if you think that I'm lying or there's some way you can try to come and show how that's the case, I'm all ears. I'm keeping it professional, and I'm just getting straight to the point, trying not to waste time with this guy because I don't even want to have a conversation with him. I literally came to have lunch with a friend, and then now I'm in this like pretty weird situation. He then just goes, hey, man, I came to try to make things right. I don't understand why you put that video up. I put that video up because you are running your mouth saying lies about me. You're making up stories about me that aren't true, and you are hurting my image to others and potentially ruining business for me. I haven't said anything negative about you. I haven't told anybody anything. I'm like, really? You haven't said a single negative thing about me ever? Oh, oh. well, I, I told one guy, I'm not going to say his name, but I know who he's talking about. And then I say, you've only told one guy. One guy, really? Well, actually, oh, well, there's another guy that maybe I said something to. Dude, he's just like not a good liar. It's like, what are you doing, dude? This sounds like some type of shit you'd hear in like third grade. What's going on here? So that he kind of talks about their little weird back and forth there. Let's continue. Two people, him saying lies about me, can easily spread and it gets to more people. Thus, my name is being tainted. So then I go, why did you even say anything negative about me? Well, one of the guys that asked, then I say, why did you even say anything negative? Why couldn't you just say, oh, no, I haven't talked to him, and that's it? He's like, well, I just said that out of emotion. Now, this whole thing drags on for 45 minutes. I'm going to try to just keep it straight to the point. Bear is sitting right next to me, and my friend is sitting across from us on a table. He's like, I'm here to try to make things right. You know, what can we do? Now, the number one priority for me is to make sure that my name is not smeared. I'm not slandered, and I want my name cleared from anyone that Barra has spoken negatively about me. Now, if there's anything that I've ever... I mean, yeah, imagine if someone of Barra's popularity came to you and was, like, talking shit about a certain individual. That would stick, and you'd probably go tell, like, a few more folks after that because why else would someone of that, like, popularity start saying all these things, right? You'd think they're, like, a credible source and wouldn't be saying these kinds of things. So I can understand where he's coming from, thinking you know, crap, my name's going to get around and it's going to ruin everything for me. And this guy's got about 70,000 followers on YouTube, so he's fairly well known. Or done negatively that people don't like, that's all good. Anything I've done that someone doesn't like, you're welcome to bash on it all you want. But if you're making up lies, that's not something I'm okay with. So I end up just saying, okay, you want to make things right? Let's do a video together where we talk and make it public so everyone can see. And we can address the entire video and we can put everything out on the table. You can. Okay, so to quickly recap this moment, basically, Barra declines and then asks him if they can like take a photo together with him and Barra going like this, which is like not the point of it. That doesn't solve anything. That just like makes Barra look good, if anything. And that's not what is trying to be done here. Do what I do. I don't want to be. I care less about me and I care more about what's right. So if there's something I did wrong, correct me. So then I can address and I can fix that. And same for you. I know for a fact, because I have a paper trail, everything I've said is fact. But now we can both make sure that we have an ability to present our case. I mean, it's kind of funny that his brand is like unironically doubt me because like people that do want to doubt him, <laughs> you know what I mean? But obviously like, He's giving some pretty cold cut evidence here. So then he goes, no, no, no. How much do you want? How much do you want so we can make things better? I say, dog, okay, when you're in this guy's situation, money, like, no matter what, maybe, like, to some people, but, like, when you're in this kind of a situation, it's like, nah, dog, like, just, like, passing over money doesn't, like, clear at all. You know what I mean? It doesn't absolve you of your issues. I didn't upload that video for money. This video was to defend myself, to clear my name, give you a warning to stop telling people things that are not true about me. Well, I'm trying to just make things right. He goes back to, well, you put out this video and you're attacking the barracks. And I say, I'm not attacking the barracks. I'm not even attacking you. I put out the truth. Dude, it sounds like he's like kind of insecure about the barracks being attacked. Like he's afraid that like 
you know, heaven forbid some more stuff happen. But it's like, dude, this has been an ongoing theme. Like, even when I make a video, Battle of the Barracks, there's always, always, like, five to ten comments. People being like, bro, I'm surprised you still like the Barracks. I couldn't even get through this video. Like, I see comments that are very similar to that when I make a video talking about Barracks things. I'm confident there's going to be comments down below. People being like, here was my problem with the Barracks. Like, almost everyone I know personally... Or even not personally, but like outside of that on the internet, has like some sort of like issue with the barracks. Truth and facts, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc., on order of how things actually went. I just spoke about your behavior and your actions. He's like, well, your video can destroy the barracks. And then he starts naming different employees. They have a family. This person has a family. You're hurting everybody. And then I go, you need to go watch the video because you don't know what you're talking about. That video is primarily about you. You could destroy the barracks. My video can destroy the barracks? He's like, it's possible. And then I say, the barracks was founded by Eric Costin and Steve Barra. I have nothing bad to say about Eric Costin. Eric Costin is dope. And I have had zero issues with him. They're a bunch of other really dope people that work at the barracks. But why do you have to be a part of it? Why can't the barracks run with them? Oh, so you want me to be kicked out of the company? I'm like, that's not my call, nor do I care. Other people have made videos about me, and I don't care about videos. Well, if you don't care, then why are you even here? He says, well, I care about this because we're friends. I thought we were friends. I'm like, we're friends? After all of that, he's like, I thought we were friends. No shot, dude. Not after all that. We were friends? I thought so. You don't think so? In my mind, I'm like, that's the stupidest thing to say. Like, you've never done anything on a friendship level with me ever. So I kind of just ignored it. I'm just like, sure, bro. Sure. I did not want to get into a back and forth conversation about us potentially being friends. He's like, I gave you a room for the studio where you didn't even have to pay rent. We put Barracks Gaming out. You got to release a bunch of videos with us. Instantly, I cut him off. I start saying all the things that you guys already saw on that. Yeah, so basically, the studio that he had put together, all sent the end of the video. They talked about how the Barracks had another company coming in. And they had to, like, take over this studio that he spent, like, a handful of months making and investing into. And they're just like, hey, get rid of it. So it totally screwed over what he had built up already from the ground up, which sucks. I cannot imagine doing that. And then all of a sudden getting a call like, yeah, what you did has to go. Bye. It's like that previous video. So I'm not going to go. But I start listing everything <clears throat> step by step of the things he didn't do and the things he said he would do and he failed to deliver on. And as I'm saying this, he has like this face on himself. Like he's confused. Like I didn't send him a bunch of emails about this stuff. So I started telling him the things that I'm, I was upset about that didn't happen. And he's like, oh, why didn't you contact me? I sent you emails. I called you. Oh, well, I, I get busy. You know how many emails I get? You know how many calls I get? And this right here immediately sounds like someone who's totally at fault, right? I feel like that's a very common default whenever People get upset, like, well, I'm busy, I have things to do, and I'm this, and I'm that. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, we're all busy, but between that, like, this is business matter. It's not like he's out here being like, give me a free board, hey, shoot me some bearings. Like, this is business matter. This is stuff that you should be working on, especially if you want to be fully in control of the barracks, like you said you would, then you would be a part of this, right? Then why are you asking me to contact you? But when I try to contact you, you have a reason to not answer how I contact you. And then Bear starts doing this thing that I've seen him do a lot to people, where he just starts saying the most random excuses about things in his life, things in other people's lives that he's close to. And, oh, well, this happened to this person. And then this happened. And then this. And he just starts making up all these excuses about why he neglected to even read emails or text messages or not make a callback. Like, all these things that are just irrelevant, really, it's just, yeah, life happens. So then I jump in and I say, yeah, man, life happens. We all have lives. We all have things going on. But that doesn't give us a right to end up leaving people hanging, not delivering, and just stringing people along. Now, I've noticed this pattern where he starts to deflect and either put the reason on something else or the blame on someone else. So then after I put a stop to that, he goes back to, look, man, I'm trying to make things right. You know, how much do you want? I'm like, bro, I don't want your money. I'm like, look, man, I tried getting hold of you a bunch of times. You didn't deliver on a bunch of things. Every time we had an issue, I tried getting a hold of you. You have never tried to get a hold of me. Why wouldn't you try to get a hold of me when and all these other things were happening. Now you're trying to get a hold of me when there's a video out putting you on blast on things that actually happened. You're coming now because you're not happy with 
your image right now, but you could have easily have fixed all this had you actually communicated with me and actually followed through with your word. I'm like, bro, we had all this game plan. I did all this work and then you left me hanging. So then he goes, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm like, I don't feel that way. That's what it was. So then he starts going into the whole, you don't understand what it's like to run a business. You know, there's so much pressure, so many things going on. And I, okay. And this is what I want to quickly talk about and hope people listening can use this as a lesson. And I don't want to sound like I'm generalizing. Always be like cautious of like where you put yourself and like who you're putting yourself, even if they're like a close friend of yours, kind of take a step back and look at what they're doing and like try to get a business understanding of how things work before you like put yourself in there. You know, I've been in a couple of those situations myself. I've been taken advantage of a couple times. Now, some of these cases, I don't want to say this applies to all, but some of these cases, sure, go for it. You know, sometimes stuff like this is good to help you get your feet wet, things like that. If you're new to the industry of like working with a smaller business, but there's certain cases where it's like, yeah, sometimes you really do get chewed up. So if you are looking to dive into this kind of thing, I want people to be like very aware of that and kind of be cautious with that. Don't just like dive in because it sounds cool up front. I had so many big things to take care of. I couldn't get to this thing. I had to go and do this and go do that. And every time I wanted to try to get back to the thing that we were working on together, some other thing came up. I didn't have the time to work on this thing. Then I say, bro, I didn't need you to do anything. I literally did all the work. All I needed you to do was just let me release the content. He's like, I let you release the content. You did the gaming. I'm like, bro, six months later, after the live stream, and you took down that live stream, and then he totally didn't even remember that he did that. Literally the day that the live stream went up, you deleted it. He's like, I don't... To quickly kind of bring this to a wrap, pinned it at the top, and I did a little update about the ambush, and I just summarized this by just saying something super quick. So in the text message, he says he was surprised to see that, even though it seemed like we were on good terms when we left. I'm like, bro... We weren't on good terms. I just wanted to leave. You haven't made anything right by me. How could we be on good terms? And then his text message says, instead of us meeting in person, how about you just text me what your demands are? I don't have demands. I didn't go to Steve Barra with, hey, I demand this to take down the video. I don't care to take down the video. I made the video. I'm fine with the video being up. It doesn't bother me that it's up. He came to me because he wants me to take the video down. So the idea of demands doesn't even make sense to me. I take a few minutes, collect my thoughts, and I pitch them one and only one option for us to resolve things. I'm not going to say what that was in this video because I haven't got a final answer from him. We had a little back and forth. He hasn't said no. He hasn't said yes. So I'm going to give it a couple days and see if I hear from him. If I don't hear from him in a couple days, then it's clearly a no and... I'll make a video updating that nothing happened with Barra and that he doesn't want to make things right. Does want to resolve things. Then there will be another updated video. I might not be able to say much, but I'll be able to say that things got resolved and there will be a reason why it's resolved that will be known. Again, I have no plans on making this video. Like I was done with, I just wanted that one video so that Barra could stop talking about me. Barra's team could stop talking about me. Yeah, dude, you would think that like they would stop at that point, right? Like that would be like, all right, stop. But apparently it wasn't, which created Homeboy to have to make another video. And then check this out. So you go over here to the Hyphenates channel and he made a video called Steve Barra trolling me with burner YouTube account. He goes into a lot of detail. So if you're interested in watching this, I highly recommend watching his video. One thing that was really interesting that he brought up was from this Fen Forever 1545. And one thing he talks about is how uh, he thinks that this commenter is Steve Barra because when they were working together, Steve would call him Joe, which not even like his closest friends uh, at home would call this guy Joe. Uh, he would just oftentimes go by the hyphenate and other nicknames that were not Joe, but Steve in the past had called him Joe once or twice. So to see the name Joe here kind of led to the fact that it could be Steve Barra. And also, too, the punctuation on this comment is, like, perfect. And it's crazy. Like, someone of his age would give, like, really good punctuation. You know what I mean? That's what I found interesting about this whole thing. And also, here's another thing that's interesting. So this isn't, like, the first. Like, other people have been known to see 
like interesting comments from accounts like this. My homie Brian down here commented, a different burner account left a bunch of lengthy comments under my videos after I spoke about the barracks and everyone was confident it was Barra. Yeah, so it's just interesting to see that like people are thinking it's him. And it seems like, you know, there's no like cold hard fact that it is him. This could be someone like pretending to be him, like super trolling. Do you know what I mean? I don't have any evidence that it's him. It just seems like it's him because of what we've already talked about. He seems very invested in, you know, responding back to people in the comments. People have already known him for that. He's invested in drama. So it kind of checks out the Joe thing. Kind of, There's a lot of things that lead to it uh, checking out. And I think, you know, for Steve Barrow to be trolling him with a burner account uh, is pretty childish. So that was kind of the crux of that video. So this all leaves me to think, what do you guys think about Barrow? Let me know in the comments. But also, too, I'm kind of torn because... I also know some people that he's like given actual opportunities to that I've also been close with that have worked out for them. And I've also heard a lot of other really good things about him too. So this video wasn't for me to be like, this guy sucks. It was just kind of for me to look at what's out there and kind of talk about it since it's been kind of like over my head as someone who's been making YouTube videos. I've been seeing all this like smack about Barra and it takes you forever just to like, get underneath that to find like one little inkling of a good thing about him so you know i don't know i mean the internet does feed drama because it sells like i've said time and time again but you know leaves me the question what do you guys think so i'm gonna end my video here if you want to go check out the three-part series by the hyphenate also go show that guy some love on his channel that'd be great and most importantly, if you want to subscribe to my channel, that would be wonderful. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers by end of the month, so that'd be wonderful. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I'll talk to you later.